What's going on guys? It's Isaiah finally back with another video after the cool video I did unboxing my newest guitar. But today we're talking about a different guitar that is cut from the same cloth. Today we're going to be talking about the Ibanez THBB10. <laughs> So if you don't know, the THBB10 is the first run of the signature AZ model for uh, Tim Henson of Polyphia, a modern day guitar hero, a modern day guitar legend. You could say, even if you don't necessarily like his music, if you're connected to the guitar world, there's a higher chance than not that you have heard the name. First thing that he did with Ibanez, and it's called a THBB10. Now what that stands for is, uh, Tim Henson Black Beauty. <laughs> I don't know what the 10 stands for. The 10 kind of seems to be in like all of their uh, signature models. I don't know if that's referencing the fact that it's an AZ. I'm unsure if any of you guys know why the 10 is at the end of all that signature models. Do you mind leaving in the comments why that is? Because I genuinely don't know and I'm genuinely curious about it. Basically, what this guitar is, it's an AZ. I've been as this answer to basically what sure does with like their classic s and classic t stuff this is kind of what ibanez does around that range but it's way more affordable but it's still very specked out and very great guitars and when i say this is my introduction to the az line of guitars and i am obsessed and i'm really digging what ibanez is doing now like this is what started it for me and now i just can't get enough of this type of guitar so we're going to talk about the Specs. We're gonna do some playing demos. I'm gonna give you the good things about this guitar and the bad things about this guitar. So let's get right into it. So just like the last video that I did as a guitar review, we're gonna be reading the specs right off of sweetwater.com because that's just very easy. Now this is a guitar that you can't buy anymore. This is not a current production model. So it's a little bit uh, limited on the information per se. It has the Tim Henson signature DiMarzio Notorious pickup set, which you can see right in there. That is two single coils, kind of in the style of a Telecaster and a mini humbucker, which is pretty sweet if I say so myself. You got this nice roasted maple neck that is uh, kind of modern C-ish. is what you would see on pretty much all the AZs. You also got that roasted maple fretboard, which is really nice for a guitar that uh, was retelling at the price that this is retelling at. You also get 24 stainless steel frets. Can't complain about that. I didn't obsess with the feel of stainless steel frets and really love the idea of not wearing through them as fast as you would a guitar that has nickel on it. Um, you get in the Godo 1502 Tremolo with the Godo Magnum locking tuners to match, both in gold hardware, very tasteful. You got that Graf Tech Tusk Nut instead of uh, a bone nut, which honestly, I really like the Graf Tech stuff. It's definitely doing it for me. And that's kind of the basics of the specs that this guitar has to offer. Unfortunately, like I said, a lot of this information for Sweetwater has been archived. I do apologize for that. If there's any more interesting specs available for this, I will list them right now. And the source, let's just get into it, man. Let's just talk about the things I like about this guitar. So what I like about this thing is HSS, cause I'm a huge Strat guy, right? But this has that mini humbucker in the bridge. This was a new thing that I wanted to try, something I wanted to experiment with, cause I was looking for a HSS guitar in general, cause I really find myself loving the neck pickup and the split sounds like the out of phase sounds that you get out of the Stratocaster but unless I was playing like some really Philip Sacy music I wasn't really leaning into liking the bridge pickup for my personal things that I do at home so I was really interested in this pickup configuration for a while and I had been fiending for an HSS guitar and 
after months of just looking at different things, this is what I ended up with in my possession. So I ended up with this guitar and this is just so nice. Like it's just all the stuff that I like about the Strat when it comes to the sound and the comfortability and it takes away all the things that I dislike about the Strat <laughs> when it comes to the things that can be uh, uncomfortable or not very playable. It's, a very modern take on what a Stratocaster is. And in my opinion, this is what, when you're playing modern music, what a Stratocaster should be. These pickups, these uh, Tim Henson pickups are just great. They have a lot of range. They sound great, um, super chimey. It sounds like a Strat, how you would want a Strat to sound like, but it has its own characteristic that is very, very polyphia. I guess if that makes sense, you can just kind of tell when you start pushing it. So you boost the amp with this, like even in the bridge pickup when I was gigging with it and I boosted it like a blues driver through my PRS HX DA50. It was very much feeling like, it was very much feeling like Muse Polyphia. I don't know how else to describe it other than just saying it felt like Muse Polyphia. And that wasn't a bad thing for me because I really liked the tones, but I guess that is something you can be wary of if you're not too much in the market of looking for their tone specifically, but luckily there's non-signature model AZs that are also premiums or prestige that also sound great. So I'm still very much in the camp of recommending a, this style of guitar if you're looking for a modern Stratocaster. Other things that I really like about this guitar is this comfort cut right here. It's something that I definitely have been taking for granted when it comes to other models of guitars because I just don't necessarily get something like this on other guitars very often, but this is just super comfortable and super helpful and I genuinely cannot get enough of it. And it just makes me so much more confident in general to play past the 12th fret, which is something I don't usually do. And I never chopped it up to it being the block that was hindering me from that. I just thought my hands were super big and it was super uncomfortable on the tiny frets. But I find myself venturing past that 12th just more and more just because that comfort cut is there to make things a little bit easier. Now this thing has full Godo hardware, which is a personal preference of mine. I love, love, love the Godo lock-in tuners and I love these Godo floating style bridges because you can still do little dive bombs. You can still, you know, what's that little move called, chat? What was it called when you did like that? If you guys know what that is, can you also put that in the comments so I just, I can know what to refer that to being in the future. You can do all those things with this, even though it's not on a lock and tremolo. And the beautiful thing about it is that it stays in tune. These things stays in tune. Like this hardware is just so good alongside that roasted maple neck that just does not want to move. Eventually I want to do like just a review on like AZs in general when I get my hands on so maybe maybe a non-signature model to really drive home the point, but you don't have to like Polyphia to get behind this guitar. It is super good and it looks great. Me personally, I'm a huge fan of this aesthetic because what they basically did was take that Les Paul custom Black Beauty style guitar and throw it on the Ibanez. It even has like the little pearl blocks on it and everything. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. And I'm sorry if it feels like this is more of a ramble style review. I really like this guitar and I'm just genuinely talking about the things that I really enjoy when I play this guitar personally, all I gotta do is think in my head is what can I tell them that I don't like about it? You know, what can I really say? Cause when you like something this much, it's so hard to not sell it. It's so hard to not shill it. Even though I'm very much unsponsored, very much unpaid. I'm just doing this because I love it, but it's really hard to just not tell you guys. I like this guitar. Just listen to how this guitar sounds. It is so versatile and it's just, it's been right next to my studio desk, like just tackling all the sessions, tackling all the practicing. This guitar has been doing everything for me 
up until the point that I got the Chris 10. Like, and the Chris 10 is also a Ibanez AZ is the thing. It has the Fishman fluences in it. So you could say that those pickups do even a little bit more than what this pickup setup is already doing as an HSS. It takes that DGT thing that I talked about if you could only bring one to a whole nother level just because of everything that you really can get away with with one guitar. Personally, I am aware that they sometimes have uh, quality control issues in Indonesia when it comes to Ibanez. But I will say while I'm talking about positives that me personally, the frets on this are very, very comfortable. You know, I'm not having any issues there. The body is very much clean. I haven't seen anything that's alarming when it comes to paint. There's nothing alarming when it comes to the electronics. Everything on this particular one came out great, but that's just my personal experience with the QC. I always understand that QC for guitars can vary. Like even when I made the video about the SG and a lot of people talked about their not so great experiences with Gibson. So I just wanted to be very much like, even though this is a positive for me, it could be a negative for you. And while we're on the train of thought about negatives, let's talk about the negatives about this guitar. There's two things that come to mind for me personally. They're both pertaining to this Godo 1502. And I know, I, I know, I know, I know. I know I just said that I really love this bridge. And I really do, honestly, I really do. It feels great. I love using the trim on it, it's awesome. But I bought this guitar used from a store that didn't have the bag for it and they didn't have the trim arm. Guys, it's trim arm. <laughs> it was so hard to replace in America for absolutely no reason. You cannot buy this in gold in America. I'm not lying. Like you can look up Godo 1502. Correct me if I'm wrong, send a link. That link will be in my video descriptions until the end of time. Just cause I want people to be able to find them. Cause I struggled to find this pretty bad. I had to get this imported from Japan and it ended up costing like $50 just for an arm just for an arm this is like the most outrageous thing i've ever bought in my life <laughs> fifty dollars <laughs> just because you can't find these arms now and the weird thing about it is that they're still on guitars now like the new az's that are coming out with gold hardware have the 1502 with this arm, but for some reason, it is really hard to buy a replacement arm for this in America. So that is something I just gotta be straight up honest with that is really annoying. I paid $50 for this because I bought it from somebody on eBay for like $30 and it was shipping from Japan and I had to pay for the shipping and that was like 20 bucks. So please, Ibanez, Hushino, please get these to your dealers in America so people can replace their arm. The other thing that's kind of annoying, if you're kind of like me and you do aggressive trim arm movements by accident when you pick it up, you hear that? That ratchet sound? That picks up on recordings and in amps and stuff. I would play gigs and I would go for the arm and I would just hear through the amp like over the band and stuff. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's really an issue with this guitar in particular, or if all these 1502s do this. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a quality of life thing that's a little bit annoying as a musician. It's a first world problem. Those two things that are both dealing with the 1502 are the only things that I don't like about this guitar. I did forget to mention one more thing that I do like about this guitar. And I'm gonna mention that real quick and then we're gonna kind of wrap it up after that, guys. Um, this jack right here is the best thing ever. <laughs> Straight up, like having this recessed jack so you don't step on your cable is probably one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. And what I also really like about it is with the wireless units that I've tried so far, the wireless unit still fits inside of this jack. So that's also really awesome. If I had to rate this guitar out of 10, what would I give it, chat? This one is probably a nine 
out of 10 for me. The only reason why this one isn't a 10, like the DGT, is because the parts are kind of hard to replace and the bridge is a little bit noisy. Other than that, I love playing this guitar. I played this in the Chris 10 more than anything else right now. That's kind of how it goes. You know, you get a new guitar and you play it a lot. These have just been really fun to play on, very versatile. A really good feel for me as a Strat player that wants to learn and experiment with more modern music instead of uh, just kind of staying in the blues rock pocket that I've been in pretty much since I've started playing. I'm excited to review more Ibanez guitars on the channel. Definitely can expect that soon. Um, if you guys haven't been to a live stream before, you should check that out. You can see me play this guitar, the Chris 10, the Strandberg, a lot more while also playing video games, also having conversations and just vibing it out, man, honestly. So you never know what you'll miss. You never know what type of content or what type of fun times are happening over there. So feel free to check that out if you ever have the time. I wanna thank you guys again, which is crazy because I was just thanking you guys two videos ago. We just hit a threshold of 700 subscribers and honestly, we're getting closer and closer to 800 subscribers every day. You guys, uh, this means so much to me. Like the closer we get to that a thousand, it just makes me want to cry because I really do love doing the content. I love talking to you guys and whatnot. It's really cool. It's really letting me kind of just get more and more comfortable and just be able to kind of be more of myself with this, you know? Cause just turning on the camera and talking can be so hard sometimes. <laughs> it, this takes a little bit of an adjustment period, but I've very much been enjoying the process of figuring this out and being able to bond more with you guys and let you guys see more of me instead of just being the six, seven guy that plays the blues around Florida, you know? kind of get more into my head space with the things that I like and just trying new guitar stuff with you guys just trying new music stuff in general and experimenting has just been a blast and uh I hope that you guys stick around for the journey because you know I'm really hoping to one day take this thing all the way man taking this thing all the way so I guess I gotta say the YouTube things you know I don't really do that much. <laughs> it's never been my thing, but this has been kind of uh, a more chill video, less uh, specked out, you know, per to say. But if you guys liked it, can you please leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what you think of the Ibanez AZs or what do you think of Polyphia? Are you a fan of their music? Are you not a fan of their music? You know, we could have a lot of cool discussions inside of the comments. Let's try not to get heated on the Polyphia thing. I'm not sure if that's still controversial or not. I know for a while it was like, you either liked them or you like really, really hated them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun world out there when it comes to guitar, but that's what's cool about it is things are always getting new. And you know, you can choose what you like and what you don't like. You can choose what you want to listen to and what you don't want to listen to. You can choose what you want to play and what you don't want to play. You know, all that stuff is a great time to be a musician outside of just trying to get streams and whatnot. There's two sides to the coin, but you guys know basically what I'm trying to say. This has been Isaiah. I'm signing out. I probably had a little bit more jam content at the end of this video. Um, it's been real. Peace out. See you guys in the next one.